Turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 5. Beginning at verse 4. It says, Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. Simon answered, saying unto him, Master, we have toiled. In other words, we've been frustrated all the night. And we have taken nothing. Ain't took nothing. But watch the next word. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Verse 6, I'm finished. And when they had done this, They enclosed or they caught or they came up with a great multitude of fish and their net break so much until they couldn't have no food just because we follow the instructions. Nevertheless, if you said it, I'm going to do it. Oh, uh, today, I want to just talk with you for a few minutes, a few minutes from this thought. The mirror. Jesus didn't coerce Peter to say what he said. Peter says it out of his own conscience. He said, we, we, we went fishing all night. And uh, we have not caught anything. Miracles do happen. I said, miracles do happen. Miracles are real. Miracles are a part of God's promise and his profound uh, formula for his they happen. Most of us have heard about miracles. Are we read about miracles? We're worried about the wonders of miracles. I wonder is there anybody here who remember some days ago, maybe a year or so ago, 
that in Hades, uh, after a devastating earthquake, after 15 days, a young lady was found alive. Now, you, you're not supposed to live but so long without food. You can live long without food than you can water. <laughs> but this lady was found 15 days after the earthquake and everybody thought that everybody who was in the uh, pile of rubbish were dead. But can I tell y'all something? Sometimes God does things for his glory. I don't know if you notice it or not, but every now and then something happens that we really cannot phantom with our physical psyche. Because, you know, God moves in mysterious ways. And that's why I want to tell you, whatever you're going through, it's not over until God says it's over. Don't, 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 don't listen always to what the media is saying. Because you got to understand one thing, God is in charge of the affairs of this world. And the last time I read, Clint, God has not turned the deeds, not the title over to anybody because the earth is still the Lord's. The fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein I don't know how you feel about it, but I believe and I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that we still serve a miracle working God. <laughs> Evangelist Shirley Caesar says it best. She says, uh, you probably have been in the back of the line too long. She says, you are next. in line for a miracle. Just touch your neighbor and say, yes, I got confirmation. I've been waiting on it. I've been thinking about it. I've been praying about it. I've been talking about it. Now the pastor say, I'm next. And when you next in line, I don't care. The devil in the hell can't stop what God has for you. I don't care how folk uh, can come. I don't care how folk connive and scheme. Y'all oh, come on, talk to me. Against you, if God say you're blessed, baby, you blessed. <laughs> if God said you the head, you the head. Y'all come on, and not the tail. If God say you above and not beneath, you are above. Whatever God says, that's what he means. Is there anybody in here been waiting on a miracle? I'm not talking about money. If somebody got some health issues up in here, you've been waiting on your breakthrough. You've been waiting on your miracle. I came to tell you, short of Caesar said, you are next. mean the person in front of me got to get out the way. Go get your. <laughs> you got yours. Go on and shout. Let me get mine so I can. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Go get yours so I can shout too. Miracle. And I endorse I endorse the definition 
that Shirley Haddis of a miracle. Watch this. She says that a miracle is when God does the unthinkable. Y'all better catch me. I'm, I'm finna leave. A miracle is when God does the unthinkable. Watch this. that he hadn't unleashed yet. They're going to blow some of our minds. We're going to be like Peter. Peter and the crowd. Well, when the miracle comes, our neck's going to break. We're not going to have enough to hold what God, because God has some stuff in mind that's unthinkable for us. She said, she said, she said, she said, God, miracle consists of things that are unimaginable. Eyes hadn't seen. I thought for sure that government shut down and all this stuff going on, furloughs and folk losing money, almost lose job, trying to impeach the president. I thought for sure I'd get more response than this. I thought somebody would walk up in here this morning and say, let the government shut down. Let the fellows continue, but I have been young. And now I'm old, but never have I seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I thought for sure I could get 50 folk who would stand on your feet and say, come what may, trust God because God's got the whole world in his hand. Charlotte says, sit down, you're making me, making me, making me. First of all, Miss, Miss Sadie, Charlotte says, a miracle is unthinkable. Stuff you can't think of. Secondly, she says, a miracle is unimaginable. Watch this. But she says, thirdly, a miracle is the supernatural power of God that exceeds human expectation. There are too many of us who believe that, that miracles were only in the biblical days. God is still the same. Yesterday, today and forever. And he can move you from nothing. I get there to something. He can move you from being a doorman to being the domain. He can move you from the back of the bus and give you the privilege to own the bus. Y'all ain't talking to me. He can move you from crying tears and help console other folk when they are shedding tears. That's just the kind of God we serve. Well, well, well. Reverend, what is your opinion? What is your take? What is your take? I believe in miracles. I said, I believe in miracles. If you want to see a miracle, look up. 
Look down. Look all around. And somebody in this room can stand up and testify. If you want to see a miracle, look at me. Come here, baby. Come here, come here, come here. Come, come, come right, right, right down here. Right, right here. I, and this is no makeup. She came to my office. She couldn't walk. Her back was all messed up. She was they were talking about surgery. Walk down the aisle. Walk, show them how you walk down the aisle when God works a miracle in your life. She, she could hardly stand up. She could hardly walk. They were talking about putting a knife on her, but God moves in mysterious ways. There's somebody else up in here. Clint, God worked a miracle in your life. I'm not ashamed to tell you. On drugs, 16 years. Been clean now for almost 20. Won't God work a miracle? Oh, John, just hug right there. Go get her. Y'all hug. Go get, the, go get your miracle. Get your miracle partner. Put your arms around her and tell her, baby, we got this thing. Tell her, God got us. Now, I'm not talking about what I heard. I'm talking about what I know. She came to my office. Wondering should she take, take, take the surgery. We prayed the prayer of faith. And the Bible said praying the prayer of faith and healing would roll. The fervent effectual prayers of a righteous man or woman avail as much. Let nobody talk you out of your miracle. That's some more for I just don't know who you are. Stand up, Miss Ellis. I want all the cancer, breast cancer patients to stand up in here. All oh, you. All you who've had breast cancer, stand up in here. Lift your hand. My wife contracted breast cancer over eight or nine, how many years, baby? Nine years ago, but she's cancer free. And there's some folk in here, you've been through the same stuff, but can't God bring victory out of the jaws of defeat? I wish I had some help here. And some of y'all out there, You've had counsel longer than that, but God was the miracle. He, he turned that thing around. Tell somebody he's able to turn. I mean, y'all go there, that's all right. He's able to turn around. Somebody said, turn around. If you got a problem, let's turn around too, child. Come on. By the time you get back home tomorrow morning on your job, God's going to turn some stuff around. Some of those hedges on your job, God's going to turn around. somebody else's miracle, that means your miracle is on the way. Hey! Hold on, hold on, hold on. Get
Gary, raise your hand. Gary got so sick I called Gary. You know how Gary can talk. Gary couldn't even hardly talk on the phone. I called him, Gary, how you doing? Hey, Pastor. Are you all right? I'm doing pretty good. But Gary can talk now louder and longer than he ever has. Come on. Hey! I gotta go. Tell him, but God. But God saw the best in him. When everybody else saw, come on. Tyler Perry took his paycheck and began little productions and small time plays just to make people laugh. But let me ask you, who had the last laugh? Hmm? God specializes in things that are him. Peter said, Lord, we, we can't be in fishing. All night. And uh, we have a zero. We, we started with the zero balance. And we end it with the. But God, can I get some help in this? Specializes in things that are impossible. impossible. He can take you from the basement to the penthouse. Uh, he can take you from death door and give you perfect health. Y'all gonna talk to me? He can take you from being a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. He can take a mess and make a miracle. Huh? Yeah, yeah. You have something to shout about because there's nothing God cannot do. But the next time you meet folk, because folk always have a way of labeling you, putting a brand on you, say you ain't going to be nothing. You, you didn't come from nothing. But the next time you see them and you get a chance to get close to them, Ask him, how do you like me? How you like me now? You put the word out. 
that it wasn't going to be nobody. But God has a way of turning your situation upside down all around. And when folks say you can't, as long as God say you can, don't worry about folk. Because if God be for you, he is more than the whole world against you. Uh, in this text, Peter is confronted by a nothing situation. And I just need to ask a question here. Is there anybody in here who's had to deal with nothing? Bills do nothing. Almost out of gas. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Cable bill turn off. Well, that you can live without that, but nothing. Huh? Food in the refrigerator. And you ain't got nothing. D don't, don't act proud now. I told you the other day, if I get low and ain't got nothing, I'm going down. What that card you get now? You can swipe it like a debit card. <laughs> See, a lot of folks were getting food stamps. They was ashamed to go in and put the stamp. Now they got a card. You can swipe it. You can bet, baby, if I get down to nothing, I'm going down there. I don't care who see me either. I'm going to get me my card, I'm going to go to the store and fill my bugger up, and I'm going to eat. I'm going to be merry, I'm going to be full. You can be proud all you want to. I'm going to be at home eat them. <clears throat> and you're going to be somewhere hungry with your proud self. Can I tell somebody, it's a mess when you deal with nothing. The telephone stop ringing when you start dealing with nothing. Friends, you thought you had, when they don't come around anymore when you're dealing with nothing. Nobody want to be around you. The wide old will even excommunicate you from that circle. My son, Keith, told his mama right down the street from where his business is, the wine olds meet religiously. And there's one in the group that knows the word. He preaches the word. And when he finishes, they pass the collection plate. And when he passes the collection plate, he takes the money, goes to the whatever store, get them that communion, bring it back, and they do it all together. They do better than church folk. And he had fish in this lake uh, of Genesaret count 
countless times. But you know, nobody is at peak performance all the time. Even Michael Jordan, as great as he was, there were some nights Michael was off. Even me. Some Sunday morning I get up, I know I miss. And I be trying to get out of here fast as I can. Y'all be stopping. Oh, 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 that was good. I said, what? <laughs> Y'all know how to set a man up. <laughs> Pastor, you sure did preach good today. I'm saying to my soul, let me go so I go in the back and pull off my clothes and sit down and get over this, over this hangover I got up. Because guess what? When you flunk, ain't there's no worse feeling in the world than being flunking. And all of us in here, Morris, you flunk sometime. Carlos, you flunk sometime. Uh, Ren, you flunk sometime. Bobby Joe, you flunk sometime. Uh, all y'all, include me, all of us flunk sometime. And you can't wait to get out of here for next Sunday to come. I heard Dr. Jasper Williams say, when you flunk this Sunday, that means you go and get with the Lord and come back next Sunday and you prepare to give God's people a word. But nobody is at peak performance all the time. Watch this, watch this, watch this. I won't call them out. Some of you school teachers, your students teach, us, teach the lesson sometimes for you because you ain't ready. Read, let me, let me, let me, let me tell you how I know when a person not ready to teach. They ask more questions than they give information. Jojo, what do you think about this? They, 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 they get the most mildly person in the room to talk for about 15. All right, Jojo, that's enough. Uh, 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 Johnny, what, what? They're not ready. And some of y'all ain't ready yet. Not only does the pulpit flunk, but the pews flunk too. You, you leave here and say, well, Hassan didn't, he ain't had it today. He, he's a little off the, sometimes ain't the pastor. Check out your last night activities. Because it's hard to feel God's spirit up in here on Sunday morning when you're still full of Saturday night. Is this mic working? I say it's hard to feel God's spirit on Sunday morning when you're still full of Saturday night. You blame everybody. Why didn't say right? Russia's had attitude, but sometimes we got to check out. This just happened to be one of Peter's off nights. Because the text says, I'm finished, he fished all night <laughs> and caught nothing. But, 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 but watch this. Since he had nothing. Jesus challenges him. Look at verse 4. Simon, he says, launch out mm. into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Jesus all but guarantees him. If 
you do it, like I tell you, you won't go home. You can't feed a family. You Fishing is your profession. You ain't caught no fish. But he tells him, launch out into the deep. Drop your nets for a drop. He guarantees, you see, whenever God makes a promise, he cannot take it back. Whenever God tells you, yay is yay, it can never be nay. Drop down your nets for a drought. He tells him, I know you fished all night. But can I tell y'all something I'm almost through? In your life, you may have all of your scholastic achievements. But sometimes it takes divine intervention. Some folk got all kinds of degrees and still ain't got no job. And when they can't get a job, they go back to school, get another degree, and still can't get a job. Why don't y'all say something? I think some of y'all up in here like that now. Think if you just go to school, just go to school, just go to school, you can get a job. And now, sometimes it causes for divine intervention in your situation and your circumstances for your dreams to become a reality. Yeah, you going to school for your PhD but you already got a job. That just means you're going to make more money. That's why you <laughs> Turn around and tell them. I, I, I'm going for my PhD, and when I get it, it just means I'm going to make more money. But listen, if you ain't got no job and you keep going to school, keep going to school, that means, guess what? You become a school rat. Still don't have have all the degrees on the wall you want to. They don't pay no bills. I'm Dr. So-and-so, yes, but your light bill is due. <laughs> and you have 24 hours to come up with the moon or are we going to turn them off, doctor? seem it right unto a man. But your ways and my ways are not God's ways. His ways are as high above us as the heavens are above the earth. Sometimes you got to condescend and come off your high heart. I said, Lord, I tried everything. I tried it my way, and it just ain't working. So, Lord, help me speak, my little son. Here. Lord, I surrender. And I put it in your hand. Oh, watch the text. Because it shows us how to get something out of nothing. I'll be doing this for a few minutes. First thing, if you're going to get something out of nothing, uh, Peter shows us in verse 5, a clause, you got to call on the right name. Look, 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 look what was it. When Jesus told him to 
launch out into the deep, let down your net for a drought. Simon also said to him, Master. Master. He, he, he didn't say, mm -hmm. hey, man. He didn't say, excuse me, brother. He didn't say, uh-huh and uh-uh. But he calls him master. And that's all he wants us to do is to acknowledge him as our master. You see, when you, yeah, acknowledge him as master, you are saying to him, I put it all in your hand. And how many people up in Pilgrim Rest this full Sunday morning know if you put it in God's hand? He's able, yeah, to make something out of nothing. He wants you, yeah, to call him master. Because when you call him master, everything subsides. Do you remember in Mark, I believe, the fourth chapter around 37, 38 verse, when uh, the billows were blowing and uh, dashing high and the ship was almost full of water. They went to the back of the ship and said to him, Master, carry not that we perish. Does anybody know what he did? He got up and said three little words. He said, peace, be still. And I'm wondering today, is there anybody in here who's accepted him as your master? When you accept him as your master, you say to him, where you lead me, I will follow. When you accept him as your master, you say to him, love. I put it all in your hands. And how many folk you know while you are trying to work it out? Figure out rather, God has already worked it out. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you want something for nothing, you got to learn how to call him master. Just shake somebody's hand and say, neighbor, he is the master of my life. Secondly, Peter showed us how, yeah, you can make something out of nothing. Peter said to him, master, we talk all night long and take a nothing. I want to tell somebody in here today, don't let your last night mess up your today. Can I get a little help in here? You may have messed up last night, but look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's a brand new day. And great is our faithfulness. The Bible says, because of his mercies, we are not consumed. New mercies every day. I wish y'all would help get up off me here. Don't let all I'm trying to tell you, your past mess up your future. All of us in here got a past and no need of you trying to dig up mine and no need of me trying to dig up yours because a mess ain't nothing but a mess why don't y'all help me here Peter said we talk 
all night long and didn't catch nothing. But I hear Jesus saying, forget about last night. It's a brand new day. I wish I had some help in here. Somebody in here is is just guilty about your past but ain't nothing you can do about the past but look to the hills for what's coming your help and know your help comes from the Lord I gotta close this thing here and you know all my points kind the fifth verse, uh, the next thing Peter showed us, uh, if you're going to move from nothing to something, uh, you got to take him uh, at his word. Uh, why don't y'all help me here? Peter said, I've taught uh, all night long. Uh, I hadn't caught anything, but watch this. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, I wish I had some help here. Uh, you got to learn how to say nevertheless. Uh, I know I had my brilliant ideas. I know I knew how I wanted to go, but nevertheless, at your word, I let down my net. I got a close right here when I tell you, you can't close. Yeah, the chapters in your life until you tell him, uh, nevertheless, uh, look at your neighbor, uh, say, neighbor, uh, I've been through some stuff uh, that I'm not proud of. Uh, I've done some things uh, I don't want nobody to know. Uh, yes, uh, I've been places uh, I shouldn't have gone, uh, but nevertheless, uh, if the love Say yes, it's already done. You don't hear me. Take him at his word. His word, you don't hear me. His word will feed you when you're hungry, clothe you when you're naked. Can I close by telling somebody it ain't no secret what God can do? Shake somebody's hand and say, neighbor, what he done for others, ah, he will. I'm through. Ah, he will. Just tell him, he will do the same thing for you and me. I better know about it. I better look over it. I've been asked aside. I've been kicked around. But grace found me. Is there anybody in here know the grace of God is sufficient for you, you, and you? Oh, I wish. <laughs> about 10 folk who are real this morning who will get on your feet and say I found out I was weak when I found out how strong his grace was you'll never know how weak you are until you discover how strong God is ah, he may Mm -mm -mm. 
Secondly, mm. uh, <laughs> he didn't let his past prohibit or intrude on his future. All of us in here have been suffering. Well, maybe you've been in church all your life. All of us are aches. Some. Peter said we tall all night long. Jesus said, I'm not talking about last night. I'm talking about today. Tell your neighbors that I'm not talking about last night. Because there's enough grace for your guilt, enough mercy for your misery. I'm not talking about last night. I'm talking about right now. What are you doing now? Janet Jackson said, what have you done for him lately? Maybe you did mess up. I look over the crowd, some of folks still in Birmingham. They'll be back next Sunday. And grace will still be here. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Come on, talk to me. Y'all, some of y'all say that all like that. Before, if you didn't say all that and, get, and just walk from that to hear the church. I see about. You carried your clothes with you. But I'm glad you made the church. I'm not talking about last night. I'm talking about today. Forget about last night. That's over. That's history. That's obsolete. What you did last night. Because guess what? I got good news for you. He said, I'll cast your sins in the sea of forgetfulness. Now watch this. Jesus will do that. But in the church you have what you call scuba divers. They'll go down and get it and bring it back up. And I'll just separate them as far as they It's from the west. And then just take me at my word. Take me at, at my word. If God said it, y'all come on. That sells. Whether you be, I didn't mean to preach this long. Whether you believe it or not, this thing got pretty good to me this morning. Because I saw me in this text. Did you see you? Come on, talk to me. Did you hear the thing that was uh, that, that pertained to your lingo and your life? Don't sit here and be all holy sanctimonious. I've been through the storm and rain. Oh, but I made it. I've had heartaches and pain. Yeah. But I made it. Why are you in here? My heart has been made to believe, but I made it. those hands. Hallelujah. The door of the church open. Hallelujah. I, I made it. I couldn't tell my days from nights. Yeah. I made it. I 
up on believing. God's going to make it all right. And, yeah, I made it. Where are you? I'm looking for you. Some said, hang on in there. Keep the faith. Hold on. Jesus. Anybody think him like I do? Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, I made it. Watch this. I've been down to my last time. so-called friends they couldn't be found but I still I still made it I heard somebody say amazing grace how sweet the sound and say rest like me I made it I made it if you're here God's waiting on you Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Thank you, Lord. I made it. I look down the line and I wonder How I Where are you? How I made Y'all help me. It goes to somebody else. Just a child in the streets, no money, no food to eat, but I made it. You ought to just take somebody by the hand, take them by the hand and tell them, yeah. Yes. The devil told me I would never be in the thing where I tell him, I made it. Sometimes up, sometimes down, but I, I made it. Can I get some help in this house? Anybody made it up in here? Get on your feet and give God praise. Tell him I made it. Tell him, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, ah. Had to drink tea or some water sometime, but I made it. I made Where are you? I'm looking for you. I made it. I made it. Ah, yes, I made Anybody it. back again and lift your hand and say, I made it. Thought he had me, but I got away. I made it. I, 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 I made it. Anybody know you made it? Just throw your arm around somebody.
around and said, neighbor, we gonna make it. Amen. Tell him, we gonna make it. It may be a little rough now, but hold on. We gonna make it. We gonna make it. We gonna make it. Amen. Oh. Oh. I made it. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Tell them, thank you, Jesus. I fished all night, but I made it. Tell them, I made it, but... Didn't catch nothing, but I made it by the grace, <laughs> by the grace of God. Amen. Ah. I'm through. All of those who know you, man, I'm going to give you a chance. Do something. On the count of three, I, I want you to put your hand together and give God the best praise you have. One, two, three. And why you do it? Tell God, thank you. I never could have made it. I never, I never, I never could have made it. Oh, wait. 